Let's talk about some global macroeconomic. Now we're going to get to global. Let's start with our kind of some country economics first. Talk about employment rate, uh, and we got a lot of charts, so we're going to kind of rapid fire through these, Patrick. But you can see here that the un unemployment rate, not the employment rate, but the unemployment rate, has been ticking up. We were uh, we're, we're just under six percent now across the country, which doesn't matter as much, Patrick. We've said this a million times because. We are focused on what's happening in the individual markets we invest in, not just the entire country. So if you look at Ontario, for example, we're up to 6.3% uh, uh, in Ontario, and we were at 5% kind of in the, in the first quarter of last year. So we bottomed out at 5%. We're now up to 6.3%. I think there's probably some headlines that are going to start uh, making noise pretty soon. Well, they've already started to make a little bit of noise in that uptick, and certainly it is concerning, but I'm I look at unemployment and I know that 5% was not healthy. So 5% unemployment, we know puts a lot of pressure on uh, rising costs. We know that wage increases, there's pressure there. There's the challenge of getting enough people to do the job, to get them into uh, construction, for example. We're going to start to see a little bit of an uptick. I think we could, uh, we're going to see an uh, uptick in unemployment going forward. Will we hit 7%? I don't know. It's just a guess at this point. But, you know, I've said many times, six and a half, even as high as seven is a healthy unemployment rate. There's a churn. It keeps pressure off of the wage increases. That doesn't bode well for the increasing cost of living. But ultimately, when we look at the labor, that's what we're seeing. And given how much of our economy depends on housing and the fact that the construction of new builds has slowed right down, I think that we're going to... Uh, we're going to see that that uh, unemployment rate tick up a little bit. I'm not concerned about it, but this is lagging. So you know that if we're at 6.9 or 6.3, I should say, we are going to see an increase over the next couple of months. So JG, our subscribers are actually ticking up. Yes, we're winning. So just to remind your subscribers, and uh, for those of you who are watching this, like, subscribe, comment. Let's get those algorithms growing so we can grow this channel. And uh, just a reminder, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. JG, we can grow this channel. We're, we're, we're Let's do it. At it. <laughs> so pre-pandemic 5.9 in Ontario, currently at 6.3. Pre-pandemic in Alberta, 6.9. We're currently at 6.3 as well in Alberta. And British Columbia, the lowest of the big three, I'll call it uh, 4.8 pre-pandemic, now 5.6. So still very low unemployment rate in British Columbia, Patrick. Things are still rocking and rolling out there, uh, it appears. So that that's fascinating as we go through Canada and some more interesting things that are happening in Canada, which I know you're passionate about this one. I could just see that the blood starting to boil in your veins already, big guy, is uh, we've just had this productivity graph recently released by Desjardins Economics showing Canada's labor productivity, uh, worst on record recently, and I know you got lots to say about this, so I'll leave you the floor for a minute. Well, I won't spend a lot of time on it. We've talked about it many, many times. You know, that Canada, like the U.S., but let's just talk about Canada. We are not a, we're not producing goods, which just literally leaves me flabbergasted. I'm going, what, when do we get off of it? You know, so when you look at, you know, mid, we were up, you know, we we're happy if we hit 2%, which, you know, is rare. But the point is this is that we have all of these resources. We're in the middle of a global, I guess, I don't want to call it a global meltdown, although sometimes it feels like that. The point is this, we're deglobalization. There are countries that need our goods and we're like, we're like hoarders. Oh yeah, we got lots of water, lots of oil, lots of uh, uranium, lots of lithium. Oh, lots of fertilizer, you need fertilizer? Yeah, no, we're not gonna ship it. Like it's like, what the hell is going on? So all to say this, we have been a consumer driven economy for lots of years. We've been importing goods as opposed to producing or even exporting a lot of goods. And then ultimately we look at what's happening in the housing, consumer debt driven, that was our economy. Now we have immigration coming in, GDP, all of the rest of it. The point is this, is that we have to have a shift and whether we will or not is yet to be seen, but this is, 
fundamentally at the core of what the challenges are. Our manufacturing is trending down. Our R&D is almost non-existent, relatively speaking. We continue to use what the U.S. has got there in their budget for R&D. We just take their R&D. I mean, maybe that's a great way to save money, but it does not create jobs and it is not innovation that we'd like to see in a country like Canada. So all to say this, it's not looking good on that productivity uh, scale. And uh, we have to be paying attention to that, which goes back to what I said earlier, which is when you look at jobs and the trend of jobs or unemployment, I start to see that happening, given that our housing market has slowed down. And that was really what drove a lot of our economy. I mean, we've been talking about that for years and years, but ultimately this is going to start to show up. And this is some of a, a, a I would call this a very bright yellow flag going forward. Is this is this is this your platform speech, Patrick, for uh, running for prime minister yeah, in 2025? Was no, that was that it right there? It's it's my platform for trash talking our current federal government. So, anyways. <laughs> well, Patrick, this gets extended because there's some stuff happening right now uh, in China. What's interesting is uh, you know some of the imports. Uh, are really starting to decline. Uh, and by the way, we're seeing this in Canada. You're telling me you're seeing some evidence of this across many different countries. So imports are coming down. And I'm just going to connect these two topics for a second, because when our imports come down, well, the one country where their exports also go down is China. And uh, for the first time in 25 years, we've seen foreign direct investment. That's what FDI stands for. Uh, FDI is down uh, and turned negative uh, for the first time in 25 years. And this could be connected, uh, Patrick, down to imports, albeit I don't think they're, it's not like exports have went down. If federal, uh, federal direct investment uh, is is more longer term investing. Now, people are, are starting to hedge their bets on China is what I'm seeing with FDI coming down uh, to uh, and turning negative for the first time in 25 years. Well, the point is this, is that, you know, we're seeing data that is showing up more and more that China is slowing down and China is a huge economy. We look at what's happening with China, Russia agreements being made uh, at the end of the day, you know, U.S. and Canada, we'll just talk about them, but it doesn't matter. It could be U.K., Europe. They're not importing as much stuff out of China. So China is really slowing down. Some of that has to do with, the, I guess, the lag of inventory. But ultimately, we're seeing that whole slowdown happening in China. We can't negate what's happening with uh, BRICS nations and the addition of the BRICS nations with uh, UAE and uh, Saudi Arabia, as an example. Those are big, big shifts, West versus East. And this is going to continue to be, I, I think this is the, the lag and be problematic. It's just what's happening in China right now. We can't negate what happens on a global economy. Canada is at the effect of it. We just don't know to what degree. I, I don't know where this one's going to go, but it's worth noting. Well, I think I think I'll tell you, I, I don't know where it goes, but what it's very clear evidence of is you talked about and you said this earlier in the show, deglobalization. This is a great example of deglobalization, people pulling out of China and reinvesting into their own countries. That's what this means, by the way. Uh, and and what I also find fascinating, Patrick, is it is down for the first time in 25 years. That's significant. But this is Q3 2023. By the time we get Q4 numbers, we're going to be halfway through 2024. Like it could be way worse out there. Again, back to lagging data. And by the, and the other thing too, by the way, is these numbers often get revised. So will they get revised up? Will they get revised down? We don't know. But the bottom line is, is this is you know it's interesting, and to me, it is a clear sign and evidence of the deglobalization trend where countries are reinvesting into their own countries and bringing that productivity back on shore. Interesting to see what's happening. It's definitely a, a front row. Uh, you have a front row seat to something fascinating that's happening in the world right now. Whether good, whether bad, well, time will tell, but it's fascinating nonetheless. Well, the thing is, listen, at the, I think at the indication, the indication to me is that globally, things are just slowing down. There isn't a country that isn't at the effect of things. We know that there are wars going on and those wars seem to be escalating. When we look at consumers, when we look at just the population overall, starting to keep their hands in their pocket, they're not spending. Uh, credit card debt is going up. And by the way, 
you know, for the rain community who's coming to the meetings this week, you're going to, or who have come to the meetings this week, uh, we've got a lot more to add to this. So for the rain members, you're going to get a lot more information at the meetings. If you like what you learned here, go to the description below and subscribe for our free insiders newsletter, where you can also stay up to date for our upcoming events and our courses. If you want to see more stuff like this, click here. If you want to see the entire show, click there.